So welcome everybody that's here today. Uh, this is the fifth part of our speaking series. Uh, today we have joining us uh, Mr. Ernest Harry Begay from the Diné Nation. Um, by kinship terms, he would be my jayaj or my little dad. And so I just wanted to introduce him and allow him to introduce himself and then also uh, offer a prayer for us all and then get into his stories for the night. So thank you and <laughs> Uh, for coming uh, on Zoom for us tonight, and uh, I'll turn it over to you. Echo, how long do I have? Um, maybe about 50 minutes. Okay, okay, just, all right. Um, now, Shkalanish, Ken Zachi, Nibashish Chain, Totnes, Zangi, Dashache, Kenya, Ani, Dashinale. I'm Ernest Harry Begay. Um, I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm from Rock Point, Arizona. That's where I was born and that's where I grew up and I live there today. My mother is originally from a place called Chinle Valley. And then my dad is from Rock Point. Um, Mescalero Apache. That, that's my mother's plan. That's uh, who she is. And my dad, uh, he has his own Navajo clan called Kin Tlachitni. And my mom's dad, my maternal grandfather, was of the Tatnes Zahni clan. I never uh, saw my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, should say. And she must son of my grandma also. So my mom grew up as a, an orphan. On my dad's side, he had his dad, my Nali is Kinyaani. Our people say the Kinyaani are the first uh, clan that was made. So my dad, uh, his father, my paternal grandfather is Kinyaani. And his mother, my paternal grandma, and then my paternal uh, grandpa, I got to be around them. And it was my, my paternal grandpa that really told me a lot of good stories. So th that is one of the stories that I will get into today. I am married. I've been married for almost 40 years. Uh, she is of the Tohetlini clan. Her dad is Ashin. Her Che is Tachini. And her Nali is Betahni. So we live in Rock Point. We have three children. Uh, we have a home down in Tucson. That's where my children are. Um, my uh, youngest son is into virtual learning. He's uh, 15 years of age and going to high school. My daughter is also finishing up at U of A. My son finished at U of A and he is uh, working there for a firm called Arrowhead Engineering. So that's my family. I also had a late brother named Arthur. Uh, he has six children after uh, my brother, um, really got involved with alcoholism. I had to be there for his children. And then uh, in 2015, that's when my brother died. So since then, I had to really double the efforts to, to uh, take care of his children. And through that, I have three grandchildren. So that, that's who I am. Um, I uh, am a traditional counselor with the Utah Navajo Health System. And that is in Montezuma Creek, Utah. And I have uh, four, three other clinics other than Montezuma Creek Clinic that I have to visit uh, throughout the week. Uh, there's one in Blanding, Utah, another one at Monument Valley, Utah. Monument Valley is, is a very wonderful place. Then there's a, a place called Navajo Mountain. That's where we have a clinic too. So those are the clinics I cover. I've been the, here with the UNHS since uh, May of last year. Before that, I was with the Indian Health Services at a place called Red Mesa, Arizona, the Four Corners Regional uh, Hospital Health Care Center. I was there for six years working for the government 
And before that, I worked uh, as a traditional practitioner with the Navajo Behavioral Health. So uh, for the last um, 24 years, I, I've been into uh, behavioral health, uh, doing tra traditional practitioner work, traditional healer counselor work, and now traditional counselor. So that is what I do. I also do a lot of storytelling through our Navajo radio station, KTNN, and then uh, also on YouTube also. So if you're interested, just look up Ernest Harry Begay on YouTube and, and uh, you will get to there. In your search, you will also find a, a gentleman named Ernest Begay who's a, who's a pastor and he does his uh, uh, presentations on, on YouTube too. So where we're right in the line, one after another. So that's that. <clears throat> I will go into a short prayer for all of us and uh, it's good that this is mainly for the, the, the children, our children, grandchildren. It's really for them. And uh, it's good to share a story with them. So here's my prayer. I always uh, feel that it's uh, unique to express yourself in a prayer form using our traditional language. It, it, it's really wonderful to, to have that expression. So that's that. Now, this evening, I'll be talking about badger stories. I was, I'll be telling you badger stories. And uh, this time of the year is when they tell these stories. But as time came along, the focus has been more on coyote tales, coyote stories. And uh, I'll tell you what happened as we go along. They say that there was a place called There was such a place. That is when the earth and the sky met. They met. They would come toward each other and they would meet. During one of those times, there was also a, uh, a birth. And that was of a deity known as White beat woman, that was her name. And she was sent by the holy people down to Mother Earth so she could give birth to twins. And these twins would go on the war path against all these monsters that were destroying our people. That's one of the times that that happened that the sky and the earth met. And the Milky Way galaxy it really hit the east where you could see that and out of there, there was that uh, star that shined. And that's where then the, they realized that something special was happening. And it was really the holy people placing white, white bead woman on top of one of our sacred mountains. So that's one of the times. This other time, which is what I'm gonna talk about, that is what happened. Mother Earth and Father Sky met. And it was that way for a small amount of time. And then when they began to part, when that happened then, they noticed that there were two uh, animals walking away from there. 
on the left side, they saw the coyote. They saw him. And then over on the right side, they saw the badger. And right away, the people, they focused on the coyote because he was acting different. He was acting different and they focus on him. The badger over here was very well focused and uh, it seemed like nothing wrong, all good, it was going that way. So to this day, the badger tails aren't really covered. It's always the coyote tails. So what happened there, it really makes us think as people. It's really something that we people, we always focus on the negative more than the positive. And now we have the, the media and it's just that way. They focus more on the, the negative because it somehow attracts our mind. We have to listen to that. All of the area newspapers around Navajo Nation, uh, they all always have negative news about something that happened, that's happening. And people, uh, they're attracted to that. But over here, something good, a good story, something like that, they won't listen to that. And the same way over here, there is gossip. They'd rather listen to that than good stories. So in that way, then, in our history, that's what happened with the coyote and the badger. And in that way, then, I'm thankful to your program for uh, having these story tellings. So the coyote more or less represented curiosity. Curiosity either has a positive outcome or negative outcome. And it so happened that Coyote always got into the negative outcome with his curiosity. And that's where people really focus on that. And over here, the badger, he was going along and he had been very observant from the beginning a first man and first woman, first boy and first girl. He was always observant of them. And that's how his mind was set. In that way, then the teaching is that it is good to be mindful and observant of your parents. And in that way, then you go along and follow. Easy to say, but it's in, in this day and age, it is different. It is different for our young people. They have uh, parents that uh, use alcohol. They have parents that uh, are divorced, so forth and so on. So they then live through that trauma. So in that way, then that uh, badger way of being observant of parents. Uh, it, it's not as existent today, but there are people that you could find that you could uh, look up to as mentors and then follow them in that way. Uh, and that goes with not only parents, but grandparents. It also goes with leaders. It's evident that it's there. But the main thing they learned from badger was he was very observant of first man and first woman. And that's how he went. So he was going along and then he thought about what first man and first woman did, what they did when they first met. When first man and first woman met, it was just uh, that at their own free will that they met. Now you'll hear a lot about the Navajo stories that say that there is such a thing as uh, arranged marriage. That is different, that came later. 
that came later. Like I mentioned, the white beat woman being uh, placed on a sacred mountain, but the holy people were, were there and that's where she was born. And her parents, dawn boy, they call him Hayotkatishki, and then dusk, evening dusk girl, no that was an arranged marriage. So that white shallow woman would be born and she would then be sent to mother earth and she would give birth to twins and the twins would go destroy the monsters that were eating up and then killing the people. So that's the origin of arranged marriage on that side. But back then in the beginning, it was just first man and first woman that got together. And then they noticed that the fire that they had, they put it together and it shone brighter. So they were able to, to begin their life together. So that's where that's at. So either way of meeting uh, a mate for life is good either way. Um, I, I went along and I met my wife and we're, we're coming along all these years, uh, uh, 39 plus years. So that, that's where we're at. So in that way, then that was in Badger's mind. He knew that at some point in time, he would have to have a mate. He knew that. So in that way, her his observation of first man, he went along and they say, Badger, uh, if you were to take its uh, hands and its feet, they say that there are five marks depicting us, earth surface people, five fingers, five toes. They say the badger has that back then. So in that way, that's where he was going. And he is called Nahachit in Navajo, which means that you, you dig. That's what you do. And he's also one of the ones that helped the people go from the yellow world to the white world by digging as they climb higher and locust was right behind him and they got to the emergence, Hajine. So he was helpful there. So in that way, this is in the yellow world. They say that the black world was the first world, the blue world, the second world, and then the yellow world, the third world. This is where the, the, the sky and then the mother earth met. And that's where then, as I said, these two animals were going in, in separate directions. So the badger, he thought about what the first man and first woman do. And he noticed that the seasons were there. And he knew that the uh, it was fall time. And he knew that soon the winter would come in. So in that way then, the thought of preparation for winter, that is what crossed his mind. And the first thing he thought of was a dwelling. It was a dwelling. So what he did is that he dug into Mother Earth. And in Mother Earth, he made his home in a circle. He did that, depicting the, the Navajo home, or rather first man and first woman's home. He did that. And he, he dug far enough to where, the, if he stood, the, the dirt ground level was up here. And in that way, then he also built like a, 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 a stairway out toward the east. And that's where then, he placed some robes and some blankets that became his door flap. He did that. And he, that's where he went into and he got wood, he got wood. So the first th thing he thought of was a home and then wood and he started a fire in his home. He made sure that there was a chimney. He made sure of that. <coughs> <coughs> Years ago, my Nali, my paternal grandfather, had one of those homes like that, where the, it was 
into Mother Earth. He, my grandfather dug into Mother Earth, and then he also made a covering over it and a doorway. That's what he did. So I got a chance to live in one of those. It's really a wonderful uh, experience to, to live in one of those. So that's what Badger did. That, that's the first thing that he did. He got ready and he built a home. And then he got, he got the wood. And he also learned to be on a special diet to where that he could uh, uh, survive throughout the, 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 the winter. So that's the first thing that he did. And that's where he spent his first autumn season and winter season. He was there. He got everything ready. So that's the first thing that he did. Whereas Coyote was going this way, it was just, um, shall I say, <clears throat> bumming off of others. That's what he was doing over here. And over here, the first thing that uh, Badger did was build a home. So in that way, that becomes a teaching to our young people and even to us as grandfathers and grandmothers that the first thing to do is to have a structure, to have a nice home, to start with that, to go from there. Because that is the way that the Badger did. He was very positive in that way. And it all was based on his observant of first man and first woman. So he built a home and that's where he survived throughout the fall season and then the winter season. And he would see the stars through his chimney. He would see the stars. And that's where then, that's how he knew uh, what time of the night that he was at. And that he was very observant of that. Even during the day where the uh, sunlight came in, uh, he knew just what time of the day it was. So that was like his uh, clock or his watch. He knew that that's how that he went. And he had that dwelling throughout the autumn and then throughout the summer. So, or rather winter. So then springtime came. Springtime came. And then what he did was he went and he got some seeds, corn, beans, squash, pumpkin, and melon. He also got some sacred seeds for tobacco. He got that. He got that and then he brought it home and he prayed over it of why he got them and what he wanted to do with them. And that was to plant, to plant. So he had his prayer over those seeds. That became a ritual from that time on. I think that there might be a few people on the Navajo reservation that still live that way, that still practice that. You get your uh, seeds and you have a blessing way ceremony over them. That's what he did. He also got the, uh, the planting tools. He got that. He got that also. And he learned that all from first man and first woman. He got that and he laid them all down and he prayed over it. And then from there, then he went and then he got his corn fill, beans fill, squash and pumpkin fill and tobacco fill. He got them all, all ready. And they say that with the Navajo, there were four different ways of having a cornfield. One was a circle. Our people, they used to plant in circles. Now, when you fly over the United States, you will notice that in the Midwest, there are many uh, uh, farm areas that have that circular way of planting. It used to be like that for our Navajo people. And that's how he planted. And there's a meaning for that. And then, there's also the square, how to plant. There's also the rectangle. And believe it or not, 
there's also the triangle. They had that. So the circle came to be that it meant that everything was intact. Everything was balanced and all equal and wonderful. In that way, then that circular way of farming, all of that meant that it's time to move on to the next level, to move on to the next step. The square where of, uh, the way of planting was to equal and balance things out in the society that they live in. The rectangle meant that it was to lengthen the lifespan of the people. And then the triangle was when this array happened, everything going wrong, they would plant in the triangle with the tip of the triangle pointing toward the east. It was time to recover to get out of that. So that's the way that they, they used to plant. So he planted in the circular fashion. He started at the middle and he went around clockwise all the way around. That's what he did. So that was the way that um, Badger did that spring. He planted and then he went back to his uh, dwelling and then he got a medicinal spiritual person to come over. And with their help, he made an offering for it to rain so that his crop would grow. That's what he did. So those are all Navajo farming practices to this day. That's the way that people do. Only a few, I shall say again. But that was the practice, the way that they went about it. So he did that. And then rain came. And then he had to go out there and work on his farm. Even in the hot sun, he had to do that. He had to really work at that. Just so that he would have food for the, for the, uh, the, the autumn and then the winter. So that's what he did. So in that way then, he learned that corn was consumed to have a good mind. It, is, it feeds your brain. It goes to your brain and gives it blessings to have a good mind, a good clear mind. That's what you eat corn for. And then beans, um, this is the part where sometimes uh, people smile and laugh. They say beans, it is for the air within you, the air within you. It keeps everything good, the air within you. And that's where then grandpa used to say that, that's why it's not uh, funny or to be ashamed of to fart. That's what my grandpa used to say. That that's, that means that, that, that takes care of that, the air within us, it keeps it clean. That's what it is, it's what he used to say. And then my grandpa used to say, he said that if you look at a very handsome man, beautiful woman, something like that, that means they fart a lot, is what he used to say. That's what he used to say. So in that way then the beans is that way, it was for the air within us. And then, <clears throat> and then what the, uh, squash and pumpkin and melons. It was really for the, the plasma and the blood flow within us. It took care of it, the uh, sourness of it, the sweetness of it. It took care of our blood. It took care of our blood really good. So in that way, that, that, that was for that. And then tobacco was to really just, after you eat, then you use that tobacco, then everything gets in sync and then everything balances out. That's what the tobacco is for. So that's what he did. He did that throughout the summer, he worked on his field. That's all he took care of. And sure enough, a good crop came out. And in that way then, believe it or not, the badger 
for that time was a vegetarian. That's what he was, was a vegetarian because he felt that plants, well, they're different, some to be consumed and then some not to be bothered. They say there are four kingdoms of plants. Number one is the food and the everyday use of certain plants. Number two is where your uh, sage and cedar that any one of us can go approach and get. Just place a valuable item there, like sacred corn pollen. You can, you have access to that, to sage, and then to cedar, to sweet grass, these things you have access to, you can do that. And then number three, there are more powerful medicine that you have to have a certain prayer and song and then the name of that plant in order to go there. These are very powerful plants that you cannot just go over there and approach. It had to be somebody that knew the name of that plant and, and get it for its purpose and talk to it about that. And then <clears throat> number four was, believe it or not, plants, I don't mean to be mean, but I'll put it this way. Plants that are no good for nothing. They're just there. They, they, they really don't have a purpose. It seems like they're, they're just there. So that's where then grandpa used to say that there are people, everyday people that are like the first plant. They do things, they get things just for themselves in their life and that's how they survive. Number two, we have people like uh, policemen and firemen. We have people like that, teachers. Those are in that uh, second category that uh, go out and help people. Number, th number three are those specialists, like neurosurgeons, those kind of people. They're specialists and, and they, 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 they practice their medicine in that way. And then, like I say, number four, we do have people that get into alcoholism, drugs, and what have you, and it's poor, it's, it's, uh, they're poor, and then it's humbling to see them just stumbling around, and, and, and sometimes they run into harm, but our prayers are always for them. So in that way, then, my grandfather used to say that, which category are you going to be in? Which category are you going to be in? It's your decision. You have to have that determination and observe the good mentors, observe the good people and learn from them. That's what he used to say. So in that way, then the plant kingdom is that way. So in that way, then we use sage and then we use cedar. These are wonderful blessings. They are powerful in their own way. They are very, very powerful. So we have that today. So in that way then, that's what he had, uh, that tobacco part and these other three medicines. They call them, in Navajo, we call them na the na like the na people, I believe you would say na the na And it goes in precisely with the name of corn, na da and then beans. Na oshe, and then uh, pumpkin and squash. Na yeze, and then tobacco. Not o. Oh, see that na the na. They they were thought of as wonderful blessings, and that's what he had. So he had all of that. He 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 grew all of that. That's what he did. Remember, he has a home. It's uh, built comfortable for the summer, and for the for the winter. And then he has his supply of food. He knows how to labor to get those things. And he went through that. And then the time came where the crop was there. They were all fully grown. So in that way, then that's where he learned that. He learned that there are a number of ways 
to cook corn. There are a number of ways. The blue corn mush, blue corn mush, they say that that is the one that can be eaten throughout the year, blue corn mush. There are other ways of fixing corn. Like for instance, hominy, posoli, that kind of corn. And then we call them uh, uh, steamed corn. That is where that they cook the corn, they roast it, and then they just leave it there, they dry it, and then during the winter, then they brought that out and they boiled it and it was consumed in that way. They say that those food that are that way, some of them, they're seasonal, they're seasonal. Like for instance, to the Navajo in the old days, to eat uh, steamed corn in the summer, it just didn't jive. The same with the, the melon, the watermelon, the cantaloupe, they're all ate in the summer because of the heat that's there. And it has a way, a natural way of cooling down a person. That's why they ate that. They say that don't eat watermelon and cantaloupe in the winter. Those kind of powerful teachings, they had that. And this is what the badger understood from first man and first woman. So he had that. So that's where the, the food part of it came in. So then the crop was there. The crop was there. And that's where then he knew he had to make uh, a, uh, a, 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 an appreciation ceremony. He knew he had to do that. And he fixed everything that he got to get ready for the, the, the fall and then the winter. So he had all of that ready. And then he thought he wants to be pure and clean when he's going to put his prayer of appreciation to the holy people for the crop that he got. So that's where then he went back to what first man and first woman did. And that's where what he did, he followed that order and he built a sweat lodge. He built a sweat lodge. The Navajo uh, style of sweat lodge back then and even today was that they had two forks at the doorway that went up and then one from the west then they put in everything. Then they, they covered it. And it was, they covered it with dirt again. So then they placed the rocks on the Northeast side. And then they set from the East to the South, all the way to the West, they set there. That's what he built, that that's what he built. And he knew the songs that go with it. How uh, don't so firefly brought the fire. How cha the beaver people brought the wood. And then how the mountain ram brought the rocks. And how the wonderful animal that we call the mink, M-I-N-K, the mink, his daughter brought the water. So in that way then, they help him get that setting ready. And he knew the songs of how to appreciate that to them. So he went through that ritual. Again, he is uh, going along the, the road of first man and first woman, and he builds a sweat lodge. So then now you come to think of it and understand that as a young person, you go along with your education as far as you can as far as you can. And in there, there are teachings. There are teachings like this. They say that as parents, your main purpose in life is to raise your children to be successful. So what is success today? 
That's what you have to think about. What is success today? Today we have the philosophy of Western education. We have that. In that, what is success? At what level is success? And it would simply make you understand that once upon a time, a high school diploma would suffice and then associates and then a bachelor's plus Washington chairs and all of that. And now it seems like it's at a master's degree level to have that and then to under understand different disciplines that go with it, Washington chair that go with it, um, all these things, best practice methods that you have to be training. So just that degree, it, it's there, that's the basis, but these other things per your specialty uh, to your, through your uh, discipline and then through all of that, then there's something that's there. So that's how I think that uh, master's degree is, is really uh, would be a success. So that's where it came in that, mm, that he, he knew he had to raise his children to be successful as time went along. So he had that. And then in that teaching with behavioral health, with Navajo behavioral health and ECHO was part of this when we all worked together. And that's where that saying came along, saying came along that to parents, if you want to know how you are, this is to parents, if you want to know how you are, look at your children. That's a, a powerful saying that behavioral health has. And I always look at it like that, quiet tell my children, okay, you are her, Ernest Harry Begay's children. Really be careful because your dad has these kind of stories. He goes around and helps people tell stories. They're gonna be watching you. They're gonna be watching you. So in that way, be careful, take care. So that's where that comes in. So in that way, then you would say that uh, the, the holy people, first man and first woman, they made one of their children, the badger, really follow that strong discipline, really follow that. So in that way, then that's what badger did. He went through his sweat lodge ceremony. Now to talk about sweat lodge, today we also have another sweat lodge where there's a doorway and then there's rocks that are put in the middle and people sit around there and then they use sage, they use uh, cedar, they use sweetgrass. What the rocks in the middle, they take water and, and splash it on the rocks. There is that one. My father built one in 1977 or 1978. He built one of those. He went up to Montana. He met some people up there, a gentleman named Tom Arkinson, Chippewa Creek, Rocky Boy, Montana. And that's the way that they had their sweat lots going. He brought that back. So one day he says, son, go get your grandpa, another, your paternal grandpa. He likes to go touch it. So I went over there and he was tired coming back from a, uh, a singing that he did, you know. And, and I told him, and he was really all for it. We went over there. We went, my dad built a little shade house and we went in there. And my grandpa was looking around. Where is that Tache? And then we opened up the door, we said, in here. And it was all new to him. And he went in, we all went in. And then my dad sang songs and then he put cedar on the rocks. Then he splashed water on the rocks. We went that way. And he was really enjoyed all this time sitting back saying, ah, uh, all the don't want the seed, you know, steam. He really liked that. Then we went in a second time, a third time, fourth time, my dad opened it up and he said that uh, if anybody wants to sing or pray, you know, the floor is yours. My Nolly, he, he spoke up and said that. He said, son and grandsons, this is something unique that you've come upon, this sweat lodge with the rocks in the middle, and then you put splash water on it. 
He said that, you know, the other one, what the dirt covered one, that is first man's sweat lodge. And that's what Badger built. And then he says, this one here, this one belongs to our father, the son. That's what he said. He said that. And this is the one that he used when the twin warriors went to see him. And you hear how he put water on the rocks and made it really hot to test them, to test them, not to do harm to them, not to kill them. So in that way, then he did that and they, and they went through it. So the teaching wasn't that, is that when they splash water on there, you remain calm and at ease. Don't try to react to the heat. And there's a special one when they put water on there that you will feel a whip like that heat hitting you right on your back. That's a whip really making you disciplined. So in that way, then he, the son, that's what he did. And that's how he disciplined his sons, the twin warriors. The same for us today, you remain calm throughout the time that the, the, uh, the leader of the sweat law ceremony puts water on, on the rocks. Because the teaching is that it, out there, from inside the trache or the sweat lodge, they would say, out there, there are very challenging things out there. There are gonna be times that there's gonna be, you're gonna be overwhelmed. There have been times that you might feel like giving up. This is the time right in here to be able to be calm. That is the time to be calm also, and then you'll make it through. So it's a disciplining uh, sweat lodge that we have. So that's a story about the two sweat lodges. And I know that our Plains Indians brothers and sisters, they have that. The only thing with Navajo that's different is that we don't have co-wet sweat, the men separately and the women separately. So that's how we go about it. So that's that. So that is what the, the first man's sweat lodge is what the badger built. So he cleansed himself. And once he cleansed himself, then he went into his uh, dwelling again and he put forth his appreciation for the springtime or rather for the year that began in autumn when he built his first home on through the winter and then through the spring and summer what he did up to that point in time. He made his sacrifice. He appreciated what he got. And then through that, then he put forth his prayers and his songs of appreciation. And then he went into the future. This was uh, sometime in September. So October is the beginning of the new year with, with Navajo people's calendar. So in that way, then said, as I go into the, uh, the new year, as I go into the fall season, uh, I want to do, do the same thing survive like I did from that time to now. I want to go on. But at a point in time in there, it has to be a little better. There has to be improvement. And he knew that and he prayed about that. So first of all was the appreciation. And then following that was the uh, prayer to go on. So he did that. So in that way, then our people believe that uh, when you pursue something, when you go after something and you accomplish it, you know what the source was behind your accomplishment. And that way then it's good to sit down and say thank you and pray about it. At the same time, explain how are you gonna use what you learn to go on into the next step. So that is what Badger did. And you could see right there that the first man and first woman probably gave an A plus, plus, plus to Badger for what he did because he was doing that. So now people were more focused on the coyote. Sure, there are many things that you learn from that. It's good. But then this one, this Badger, he had all these uh, blessings that he had as a mentee of first man and first woman. He learned that. So then he had that, he had that all intact and he perfected it for four years, perfected it. 
He learned all of it. So that's when then, one day, then he thought that I can't just go on by myself. I can't just go on like this. I have to have a, a spouse. I have to have children just like first man and first woman did. I have the survival tools and the fire there that is lit with good thinking and sarcans, with good planning for a good life and all with a sense of hope and protection see her sin. It's already there lit with that fire. And I've studied that, I understand that. So in that way, then I have to use that. I have to use that. So in that way, then he uh, went and he pursued a female badger. He found her and then he brought her to his home. And that's where then he began his life. And she was disciplined in her own way because what the badger did, some of the siblings that he had, family members that he had, they all were understanding that that's the way to live. And in that way, there was the male role, the male role in this whole process. And there, there also was the female role. So he went and he got a woman that knew the female role of having a good life, of having a good fire, having good uh, dishes and food, and then how to prepare them and all of that. She knew that. That's the he, they, they sat down together and then they talked and then they prayed that they were gonna be a husband and wife and live together. So that's what he did. And that's how then he started his life. He started his life. And in that, then he understood that there was a sacredness to making children. There was a sacredness to that. He understood that, that it's not all about pleasure. It's not all about that. It is a very tough road that he knew he had to have and he had to be focused on that, on this woman and then the children. And, and he knew that he had to raise them to be successful. He knew that. So in that way, then he worked out his, uh, his uh, timeline as to how many children he would have and then when he would have them because it was a lifetime commitment to raise them, to raise them up. And he knew that. So in that way, then that's how he began his life with his spouse. They lived together. And then all of the developmental process from the time that the fetus is conceived, conceived in the mother's womb, from that time on, the, the stages that development it goes through, development that the, the child goes through, he understood that, that the heart and the eyes came first, and then understood that the brain was next, and then the spinal cord, and then the backbone, and then the tail, and then the sexual organ, and then the uh, growth of the arms and the legs and the fingers, the hand and the fingers, and then the feet and the toes, all the way to six months. That's where the last form is the nose. He understood that, that at six months, the nose was there with the fetus in the mother's womb. So in that way, that's when then he knew that he had to have a ceremony. And then what he wanted was for that child to hear the songs and the prayers and the spiritual aspect of them to where that the blessing will go into them of spirituality. So in that way, then he went through that. 
and then the child, the senses came along. Number one, the sense of hearing, hearing the mother's heartbeat. Number two, the sense of feeling very cozy and comfortable and secure in the mother's womb. So in that way then in Navajo, when we say Shema or mother, we are, we are expressing the fact that we feel secure and comfortable, that that's, that's what Shema means, my mother. So that's what he went through. And then when the, uh, when, when the baby was born, that's where then the, uh, the, the emotion of smelling came in. Sight, yeah, sight. Baby look, and then the smelling, and then the tasting when the baby was fed. So that's five senses. And then as time went along, providing that the mother and the father were, were very observant and reverent with the pregnancy, there was a good outcome, then the good dreams came. If there was something else uh, that interfered as, as the development in the womb was happening, then bad dreams come first. There are ceremonies for that. So we have those two uh, senses. Good dreams, that's where you say thank you. Bad dreams, that's where you have to sing your protection song and then your protection prayer or get somebody to do it for you. So that was what happened and he understood that. And those were the practices that he went through. So being secure and comfortable in the mother's womb, the baby is born. When the baby is born, then what he did was he, he, he went and built a cradle board for them. And remember the first sense is hearing. The baby, while in the mother's womb, hears the mother's heartbeat. So in that way, then when the baby's born, you get a cradle board, you put them in there and you hold them to your heart. The cradle board, you hold it to your heart where the baby's ears are near the heart. They say that uh, realistically, spiritually, they can still hear the, the heartbeat. So that's the way that it goes in that way. So in that way, then a very powerful cultural teaching was forget uh, Wal Walmart's uh, baby carriers because you're just uh, holding it down here and all that child is hearing is hearing just nothing but air. It's good to have them up here. And that's where the connection, that's where the control, that's where all of that comes in. And saying, she, where she is. So that thing, those things like that, uh, you, I don't want to say minor things, they're major things, but that is what the badger learned from first man and first woman, just by his observation. So he wasn't copying, he wasn't copying. It was something that he learned that was real that he began to practice and live with. So that is what he did. And that's where then the whole child development part of it, the whole child development, all of that, the first laugh, the first word, the first step, the, babe, uh, the, the badger and his spouse knew that those were significant milestones where there were prayers that went with that. Like for instance, the first lap, when the baby laughs for the first time, that's where then, life is tough. We all have been through it. We all have had people that we love that passed on. During those times, it was powerful. It was tough. To, to go through those times. But then again, that first lap, then happiness, it's the spirit of happiness that visits the baby at their first lap. And that's where then the prayers are made that the prayers are like this. We know that there are challenging times and struggles that we have to go through. At times we might have to cry, at times we'll be hurt, but nevertheless, we make it through and happiness comes back. The smile comes back, the laughter comes back. That's why they make an offering to the, the, the spirit of happiness. This is what Badger knew. 
Whereas over here, Coyote is going along and he sees the duck family, father duck, mother duck, baby ducklings, all in a row swimming. And he was impressed with that. And he thought it all came naturally. So he had to ask the father duck, who's that? Pointing to the female mother duck. And he said, oh, that's my wife. Coyote says, what? what's a wife? See, he didn't know. And then who did, where did you get those? Where do you get them, baby ducklings? Said, I made them. You made them? How did you make them? See, that's what Coyote did over on this side, trial and error. That's what he did over here. But the, uh, the, the, the badger was attentive and paid attention at the right moment to where that he knew these things. And that's what he did with, with his, uh, his life. So he had children. He knew that he had to have eight children. Eight children is good. That's what he knew based on first man and first woman. And that's where you control everything. You feed them, you clothe them, you take care of them, raise them to be successful. So that's what he did. And he had those children grow up and they all followed their father and their mother. And in that way, uh, the badger, that was his story. That was his way of life, a very positive. So in that way then, what I got out of those stories and out of all those night times, listen to grandpa, that's where then parenting is there. Parenting is a good thing. It's a wonderful thing. And in that way then it always goes with prayers and with songs. It goes with that. And that was the basic that uh, the, the badger had. He understood his spiritual image, his spiritual way of life. He put the holy people first, first man and first woman. He put them first. And that was very important to him. Then he knew that he had a mental being a mental being that he had. He knew that it had to be up to par and strong. And then he understood that he had an emotional being, sensitivity and feelings, emotional. He knew he had that. And then he knew he had his physical being. He had a physical being. He knew that he had that. So in that way, in healing today, Navajo healing, the understanding, is your spiritual being is the one that can cure uh, your mental being when it has challenges. Then the mental being cures the emotional being. The emotional being then tells the, the physical being that everything's all right now. So in that way, that's why a lot of uh, our, our American Indian people, we have that to put the holy people first in that way. And even in Christianity, it's there saying that you put God first. It's there also. In that way, then, it's parallel with, with our, our teachings as Navajo people. That, that's where it goes. And that's the main one that makes things move, and it takes care of everything. So in that way, it's good to have a spiritual being, no matter what uh, way of uh, denomination you go as young people, as people pray because the spirit of praying is your mother. Sing traditional songs. That's the spirit of your father. So it's important to do that, to have that, to have that blessing, to be able to have that spiritual being. And then in that way, then be positive with your mental being, be positive that there are challenges that come up, but then you dwindle them down to a little size. And I can do this. That's your mental being. And then take care of your emotions. There are so many emotions and some of them are derived from negative behaviors. 
that might come in. That's where then you have to be mindful of that and keep your emotions in check. And then your physical being, the physical being, first man and first woman's teaching, Badger's teaching was that you as a child of your mother and father, this body that you have, you are only a caretaker of it. This body belongs to your mom and your dad. The right side of your body is your mother. The left side of your body is your father. You have that. You have that blessing. And that way then you take care of it and try to go accordingly to your mother and father's teaching. That's the old teaching. They say that you cannot say that this is my body. I can do what I want to with it. It's not that way. This one belongs to your parents. And then your parents onto your grandparents. Then it goes back and it goes right back into the, the holy people. That's who are we are children and grandchildren of. So these things, these kind of teachings, uh, first man and first woman, the holy people's teaching, but who was the minty in all of this? The badger. That's what he did. He came up with these stories. He came up with these uh, practices, I mean. He came up with this way of life. So in that way then, I want to share that story with you this evening. Okay?